Marvel's X-Men are slated to continue their renaissance through the current Reign of X. And so while I look back on how this current era of mutant kind has gotten here, I'm still fascinated by the kickoff miniseries that started it all, House of X and Powers of Ten. Particularly with Powers of Ten, there are a couple of small details that have always fascinated me about the book, but they aren't exactly big enough for me to do full-fledged videos on them. So if you'll indulge me, I'd like to take the next few minutes to go over some Hoxpox quick takes real quick. Playing into its name, Powers of Ten offers a look at Marvel's mutant history by focusing the scope on years that vary by magnitudes of 10. 10 to the power of 0 for year 1, 10 to the power of 1 for year 10, 10 to the power of 2 for year 100, and 10 to the power of 3 for year 1000. Now, at a surface level, this can seem like a really strange and new way of looking at history. I mean, it's certainly a stark difference from how history tends to be taught in schools and classrooms. But there are some intriguing reasons for why one might want to view history through this logarithmic progression, rather than the more common linear progression we see every day. Now, first off, as a math teacher, this brings an unreasonable amount of delight to me, since the most that the average person tends to really know about logarithms is just that they're sort of the opposite of exponents and that they're mostly just used for really niche situations like measuring earthquakes on the Richter scale and the volume of sound with decibels. But using logarithms as a tool for describing the length of history and categorizing its development is not only a creative change of perspective from what's normally taught to the public, but is also just more efficient in a lot of ways. In the modern day, logarithmic timescales tend to be used precisely the same way Hickman uses them in Powers of Ten, to present a timeline of history that projects the significance of the short term, while also generally describing the events of the long term. While some speculators on the technological advancements of humanity use logarithmic approaches to history to postulate theories about what may occur in the distant future, probably my favorite use of logarithmic timescales for talking about history is the fascinating work by John B. Sparks. Sparks made several graphics to explore history through logarithmic lenses, from world history to religious history. However, my favorite graphic he's made has to be his coincidentally thematic graphic covering the history of evolution on Earth. This is the Histomap, a graphic illustrating the evolutionary change and flux of most every creature native to Earth from as far back as biologists could accurately speculate during the year 1963. Right away, it's evident that Sparks cared a lot about this project, and even reading his excerpts at the top of this multi-page graphic really captures both his passion for this lens towards history, as well as illustrate his understanding of why this change in perspective matters so much. In his own words, As we travel forward in geological time, the more complex is the evolution of life forms, and the more are the changes to be recorded. Further, the more recent periods of evolution hold the most interest to us. We need, therefore, increasingly more space for our outline the nearer we approach modern times. And the logarithmic scale fulfills just this condition without any break in the continuity. Not only is Sparks' histomap of evolution just amazing to look at, I spent a good hour or so when I first found it just admiring how in-depth his graphics got and how he painstakingly contextualized each period along the timeline. But I like to think it can serve as just the sort of inspirational blueprint for if some group of dedicated fans of House of X and Powers of Ten make their own histomap to outline Hickman's secret history of mutant kind. This has been Mel from New Comics. I hope you've enjoyed the video.